Here is what JT Daniels tweeted earlier. The new Georgia, I guess on the depth chart, he'd probably be the backup guy right now. QB2, maybe. Here's what he tweeted. Thank you to the NCAA for granting me immediate eligibility and allowing me to play foosball. He wrote football. In the fall. Foosball. I will not comment on the waiver or the transfer. Okay. Seems like he just did, but I guess not any further. I don't think we need the details. You're, yeah. You're eligible. But I look forward to a great 2020 season with my teammates. So congratulations to JT. Now, this should mean one thing in my estimation as a person who way in the archaic days of football was a transfer back when people did not transfer much. And I didn't transfer because I didn't like Cal. I transferred because I was a stupid, irresponsible, idiot kid. And I'm not saying that about JT here, but that's why I transferred. And when I left Cal, I had no idea what I was doing, but it turned out I ended up trying to transfer within the conference, and that was a two-year penalty in those days. And I was granted a waiver, but that waiver said you only have to sit out one year, which is what everybody basically has to do now. But it looks like those days have also gone by the wayside. If you're a kid and you want to transfer, study this case because no one should ever be blocked from transferring anywhere ever again. Because if JT can go without sitting out, anybody can. Now, does that have to be greenlit by USC, and that would automatically make him okay if they say it's fine? No, it's an NCAA it waiver. It is straight NCAA. It has nothing to do with SC. Okay. Uh, now, that helped me in my days when Mariucci took over at Cal. But again, this stuff is so convoluted and stupid. And all you have to do is look at the Twitter traffic under the JT Daniels stories to see all the contradictions about guys who have tried to transfer home because a family member's sick and been forced to sit out where this doesn't seem to have any of those kinds of hardships that are involved. Now, JT Daniels. I got Slovist. Amazingly, did get Slovis, but he didn't really get Slovis. I got hurt. He got hurt. He got hurt because of the way he reacted to a rush and an offense that doesn't protect the quarterback well. JT has been able, just as a person, since we've been following him when he was at Modern Day, has been able to somehow cut through the red tape of an early high school exit, and that was first hinted and reported on this show by us, and we forced Greg Biggins to say it. And now he's been able to cut through all the red tape of a major transfer from what's supposed to be a powerhouse program to another powerhouse program with almost, it seems, no questions being asked, but of course, no one's ever going to know because he has tweeted, I will not comment on the waiver or transfer. Well, I know why you transferred, JT, and we know why you wanted the waiver. So I guess we don't need a comment. I really don't know what. Although, the- I guess, like you said, for other kids, because it could be precedent setting, well, they're going to have it. to sniff it out and try well, to figure out exactly how it happened. I do think there's a bigger point here that. Because this is how it should be. Should be made. Well, there's also the NCAA was flirting with this idea of this year being different right. and everybody having an out if they want to leave because of, well, the society and the way we're operating right now is completely backward and people are confused. So it would be probably smart for the NCAA to do that. But that's not what this is. This is, once again, JT Daniels cutting through all the red tape and getting eligible which is great because now he's going to compete for the job. For the very first time in his collegiate career, he is going to compete for the starting job. And it's going to be at Georgia where they're not going to make a bunch of excuses for him like the soft media here in Southern California did. Now, the starter, Matt, you is, you probably heard of this guy because he's slated as a real draft guy. He's got like a fourth round, third round grade right now. Jamie Newman, who is a grad transfer from Wake Forest, and he can run. He's a good player, and he's a good leader, and he is the one standing in JT's way, and he's doing that for good reason because he's done it. He's the guy that they – well, that's the other thing about JT. It's like he he had, what, 20 snaps? He's had a season of starts. Where I think he had, you could argue, that one good game. Well, no, but he had 20 snaps against Fresno State. Right. You know, so you say – it's been a while, you know, since he's taken the field, and this guy 
to use my new F1 terms, like you said, Matt, he's done it before and more recently, I think he would have the pole position (laughs) on the Georgia thing. And, of course, our friend Bruce Feldman, God love him, tweeted out, this is great for JT. What a great fit with Todd Mark to the new offensive coordinator. It's like, okay, a great fit? Anything's a better fit than USC for a guy that can't handle a rush. And God knows that Georgia, with the run game... And one of the best offensive lines in the nation. Exactly. With their run game and the way they set it up, they are going to protect him, if he is the starter, a lot better. But right now, it looks like their starter will and should be, on paper, this guy, Jamie Newman. So, the bigger point here, Matt, the fact that the NCAA seems to have just given this away like a golden ticket in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, I think it... A, might have something to do with the age we're living in. And B, it might have a bigger message about the eminent death of the NCAA. I don't think the NCAA is in a position at this point with the Power Five conferences probably ready to start their own thing away from the NCAA. I don't think the NCAA is in a position to put their foot down and try to act all hard, try to act all 